Hello and welcome to another episode of Born to Ride with me, Neil McKenzie. Today we'll be looking at the powerful and exciting sport of trials riding. Where do I stand to catch him if he does come a cropper? <laughs> we'll be keeping a close eye on the final round of the British A-Class Championships. And also keeping a close eye on Dane Sherwin, an exciting prospect for the future in the world of trials. Slippy really. Could be easier but... I'll get him next one. Dane, 17 from Leeds, has been trials riding since the age of six. He's currently fourth in the A-Class British Championships. My name's Dane Sherwin, I'm 17. I've been trial riding for about 10 years now. He's a good rider. He's got the ability there, it's just believing in himself. He's all right, yeah, he takes the mech a bit, like, but he's, he's a good rider if he puts his head to it, you know. He's, but he has a good laugh, he's a good lad, yeah. All I know is that he is a very good rider, very good technical ability, a lot of aggression, a lot of aggression he uses. Dane is quite capable at uh, riding the competitions, but he tends to ride for fun. Um, if he could get serious for a moment, he would be very, very good. Trials riding originated nearly 100 years ago when motorbikes were first invented. Trials riding requires the rider to control a responsive low-geared bike whilst having the dexterity to ride up and balance on the most difficult of terrains and obstacles. Britain has provided the trials biking world with many of the great riders. Dougie Lampkin, Graham Jarvis and Sam Connor to name a few. But for those of you who have never seen trials before, what is it all about? Well, trials riding is basically riding a trials motorcycle, which is a bit specialist, uh, over rough terrain and the idea is to keep going uh, without having to put your feet down and to go from the beginning of the section to the end of the section whether it's up, down, over the rocks, through water or whatever and keep your feet on the pegs. Well it all evolved uh, years ago by just guys that just wanted a little mess about on the moors and things like that and in roadsides and they just met and had a little run out and messed about in ditches on bikes and then eventually they decided that that they would alter the bike to make it a bit more competitive gearing wise and suspension wise and things like that and it's just evolved that way till now we've got a specialised um, trials bike which really can't sit down on because it's that low um, the suspension all built for the job um, engines that are just absolutely terrific really good looking machines obviously the kids like them as well Dougie Lampkin, World Trials Champion, started very much the same way as Dane. Dane belongs to a trials club that Dougie is still a member of. I always remember years ago, and I took him to um, a, a trial as a, a small lad with his brother Harry, and um, he was telling people how to ride a section then, and I remember him remarking at the time, so that lad will be world champion, so there we go. I must know something about the sport. Dane, like Dougie, was also showing great potential at a young age, but it all started at the tender age of six, whilst out with his family when he saw what he wanted to do. We just went for a drive up in the Yorkshire Dales and saw these little bikes and thought it looked rather good, little boys on little bikes. My dad used to ride road bikes and then we saw trials on the TV once and then went to see an event and I just started wanting to do it and then we got a bike and I just got into it like that. When I was six, we bought him a TY80, taught him to ride it, the basics, entered him for his competitions at seven. Then when he got to nine, he went his, um, he bought him a bigger bike because he was then riding up as a C-class rider. Bought him a little gas gas, 80cc, um, and then progressed from there. He's gone through C-class and then into B-class and now into A-class. The trials that Dane rides on a regular basis, we do normal club trials, we do what we call centre trials where all the clubs in the area all get together and ride. You normally get uh, you know, high class riders there. We do national youth competitions where we travel up and down the country and he rides against all the youths in the country. He's also riding the British Championship where he's riding with riders like Dougie Lampkin, Graham Jarvis. There's normally like club trials, which everybody competes in, and then occasionally there's a youth trial that's on, which is about five or six of them a year. And then there's British trials championship, which are competing now. 
At this moment, Dane is lying fourth overall in the national youth competition. It's the day before the last championship trial of the season and Dane sneaks in a last minute practice at a quarry near to where he lives. Back home and Dane washes down the bike whilst his dad tells us how he thinks he'll do tomorrow. He has a good chance of getting in the top three, a very good chance. But again, the weather conditions and he's up against some very good riders. It's getting late and with the bikes prepared and locked away, it's time to turn in for the night. Tomorrow is a big day for Dane and his dad. It's 8.30 in the morning and very cold, but luckily there's no sight of rain yet. Our bikes are filled with fuel, they're all right, they're ready to go. Uh, what we've got to do now is uh, get them scrutinised, which basically, they, uh, they check the bikes, make sure that they're all right, there's nothing loose, nothing falling off, and then they get a ticket, they get the number, and then they're ready to ride. The competition starts at 11 o'clock. Today is the last round of the championship and it's been held at Harborough Rocks, Brassington in Derbyshire. We'll see if Dane's bike makes it through scrutineering later on, as now it's time to explain the slightly complicated rules of trials bike riding. Listen up. There are two sets of rules that we mainly run on here. Uh, the junior clubs mainly run on uh, a no-stop rule, uh, where you start the section in the begin scards, if you put your foot down once, that counts as one mark lost. If you put your foot down twice during the course of the section, that's two marks lost. You can then foot as many times as you like, as long as you keep the front wheel of the bike moving, and that's three marks, providing you keep the bike moving. If your bike stops moving in a forward direction, that's a five, or if it rolls back, obviously, it's also a five. In the FIM rules, which the, the good lads and the international and the national uh, uh, trials use that's quite different you can actually stop in that and it just counts as a one providing you keep your feet on the pegs if you stop and put your foot down it counts as another one so that makes two marks and then it's two marks three marks and you can stop but you can't move backwards if you move backwards it's a five a little bit more complicated for the nationals and that's the rules we've been running on today the national rules overall scores determined by the person with the least marks most trials there is not a time limit until you get to like the nationals and the British Championship, then there is a time, but it's not a time limit to get through the section. It's a time to start the trial and finish the trial. If it's a draw, it goes by the person that's got the most cleans, and then the person that's got the most ones, and twos, and threes, and carries like that. Back with Dane, the scrutineers have checked over the bike and it looks okay. The bike's all right and that's, uh, just got to go sign on now. Well done. Back up to the van and have some grub. Today, Dane and the other riders will be doing three laps of a 15 section course. Each section is carefully walked through before the first rider is brave enough to attempt it. We don't tend to look around the course before the competition. What we do is uh, the lads will ride, they'll ride to the first section, they'll get off the bikes, they'll have a good walk around, look at it, see what needs to be done, and then they'll ride it. What we're going to do now is go to the start line. Once he's there, he gets his start time, um, and then we'll go to the first section. He'll walk the first section. He'll have a good walk around it, see what needs to be done, then he'll ride it. That's all for part one of Born to Ride. After the break, some advice on how to get into trials. We'll see if Dane can hold on to his overall fourth place in the championship, and some of this. Welcome back to Born to Ride with me, Neil McKenzie. This week we're following the last A-Class Championship trial of the season. Dane, who is currently in fourth place in the championship, is contemplating the first section with other riders. Obviously, with it being early morning, um, there's dew 
on the grass, it's very wet, it's going to be very slippy, so the first time is going to be very difficult, very slippy to get up there. And obviously, it gets steeper as you get to the top, so they're going to need some speed on this. Dane completes the first section with ease. At the trials event, the sections normally get harder as the trial progresses. This one is no different, as we're soon to find out. Some, some trials uh, they tend to, the first section will be the hardest section of the lot and they can spend up to an hour just looking at it before the first guy goes. Uh, but today obviously I think this club what they've done is uh, they've put easy sections in and they've probably put some harder ones in later on just to get people warmed up. Dane completes the next few sections pretty well, only picking up a five and a three on two of the obstacles. If you just sort of look on the hillside over there, it's like a, it looks like a red flag. But it's actually one of those clay pigeon shooting things. And what they've got on down there, where that white hut is down in the bottom, there's a shoot on today, so the clay pigeon shooting. So the riders have been warned to keep out of the way, otherwise they're going to get shot at. <laughs> Different. A bit worrying, but everyone's thoughts turn to section 9 as it looks to be difficult. Or as Dane thinks. This your genius, you haven't got a chance. So, where did you got to go? Right. Halfway down the turn, right? So you come all the way around the top and down. Dane was just saying there's ledges like little ridges in the slope at the top. It's going to be very, very difficult to find grip. Uh, if you sort of look down the hill, down the section, you've got to go halfway down the hill and do a right hand turn, which is going to nope. be very, very difficult because if they're going too fast, they'll probably overshoot. That's what I see more. Let's see what happens. I think Dane's waiting until a few of the riders have been through it just to see what happens. I thought I can barely stand on this. We're going to go. As Dane and the other riders contemplate section 9, let's take a look at what makes a trials bike different from an ordinary motorcycle. One, two, three, four. What we have here is a, a typical, relatively modern trials bike. Quite different to a road bike. Quite a lot of ground clearance, because obviously for riding over rocks, you need that ground clearance. 21 inch front wheel, which raises the front end. Handlebars are relatively high rise. As you'll see, there isn't a seat as such. High level exhaust system. There's a fuel tank in here, which uh, holds about three liters, that's all. Long travel, suspension and you'll know you don't see a suspension unit the suspension unit is tucked away inside the gearbox has got six speeds we have a kill button so that if you get into a problem on a section and the engine starts revving away somebody can come along you press the button and it stops the bike you wouldn't race this uh, on, a, on a circuit and I think that about sums it up back to the trial and 30 minutes after seeing the section for the first time the riders are still walking it through Finally, 40 minutes after seeing the section for the first time, one of the riders takes the plunge and has a go. I think we're going to see a few, uh, you know, sort of a lot of marks dropped on this section where riders just sliding straight out of the bottom corner, not being able to stop. It's a very difficult section and as Dane looks on, even Tom Sager, currently second in the British Championship, finds it difficult. With the last few fatherly words of advice, Dane tackles section 9. Get over there, he's all f***ing grit! <laughs> Unlucky. It's a full five points for Dean. He stayed on the bike. That was the main thing. He could have come off. I mean, a few of the lads have crashed um, and come off. Nobody's been injured, but it could have happened. Apart from some minor damage to the bike, Dane continues the trial with some very respectable rides. This bit that Dane's just handed me is the uh, front disc protector. It looks like he's just caught a rock in the last section, probably when he fell off. Uh, when he got that five, and it's, it's just broken off the clean brake. So, I might as well carry that, keep it amongst our souvenirs.
Dan completes his three laps of 15 sections, 45 sections in total, and only picks up points on 10 of them. And as the last rider comes in, how does Dan think the trial has gone? Yeah, uh, hadn't done very well actually. Thought I did quite well at first lap, but obviously I didn't do too good. The second lap I did a bit worse, but third lap I finished on one. So all together, I think I've done all right. He could have done better when he's done his last lap on one. I think it just proves that he can actually do it. He could ride as good as the top riders. The results in the table confirms that Dane finishes in a slightly disappointing eighth. The battle at the top of the table finds Tom Sager has just pipped James Dabble for first place and taking the overall British A-Class Championship. Tom Sager, I'm 16 and I've come first today. It's been fairly easy today, um, not very good for a decider of the championship. Um, if it was harder it would have been a lot more fun for all, for all of us. Um, maybe it wouldn't have all come down to the low scores, it might have been bigger scores, so I haven't enjoyed it that much but it's been, it's been alright. So it's congratulations to Tom, and if you have liked what you've seen, here's some tips on how to get into trials riding. If someone wants to start trials, whether it's a youngster or a mature person, if you want to start trials, you want to make contact with a local club, preferably a club that's got some good training facilities. Just more or less give it a go, you know, just get a bike, give it a go, see what happens. If you come and watch, it just helps you to get into it, and then you can meet people and you can ask where you can get bikes from. As soon as you get a bike, you can just start. Trials, you can start from the age of six. That's when you're fully insured to ride. Well, first of all, join your local mat bike club, get that organised, and then if you, you know, if you really want to do trials, then have a look in your local like trials mat bike papers for a cheap second-hand bike to start with. Recommend a second-hand one because, in my view, you do a lot of damage to start with. The youth side of the trials takes you up to year 17, and then you go into the adults and you can ride up to any age, as long as you can get on a bike you can ride. Well mountain biking and, and, and uh, cyclo trialling are, are very very good uh, ways of getting into trialling and they are clubs uh, that do specialise in this sort of thing. You can actually go to a number of clubs who have got these training schools and also run a series of easier trials so that when you're starting you don't get disheartened, you don't find yourself falling off continually and so you give it up. So you need to find a club who runs the right level of trial so you can enjoy yourself. Lots of practice, lots of motivation and if you really want to be a good rider and technical ability is the thing you want. Aggression is good but if you're technically, if you've got a good technical ability then you will do well. Practice balancing really on your push bike. Just try to go up curves and stuff like that and then maybe progress onto a motorbike. Trials is not a particularly expensive sport. Um, we're running three bikes at the moment. It's probably, I could spend more going out drinking every night during the week. I'm basically teetotal now. <laughs> we saw it first by little boys on these little CY8s, these little six, seven year old, eight year old boys riding little motorbikes. It's a chance they don't get to do on the road, in safety. This way you're giving them a bit of discipline with motorcycles and hopefully it'll deter them from going out and being mad on the roads later on in life. Decent setting on bike these day and age are about £1,200, but you can get them a lot cheaper than that. So if you wanted to start, you could start that way for less than £1,500. The course today, compared with the rest of the courses that we've done throughout the year, it, it started off very easy, very easy, and you're thinking, mm, maybe the rest of the trial's going to be easy, why have we bothered coming? But then you've seen over the last couple of sections, you know, riders are going over the handlebars, they're coming a cropper, they're having some big crashes. Um, the organisers have definitely caught them out, so it's, it's proven to be an interesting trial. The uh, summit sections have got easier. I think it's just that I've been riding them, I've got used to them, so... It's been all right. The event today, I think, has gone very well. It was a very keenly contested event. It was the deciding event for the British Championship, and we've seen Tom Sager win it uh, with a loss of three marks. Uh, the second man also lost three marks, but uh, Tom Sager won it uh, because he was farthest clean. It was very keenly contested and a very sporting contest indeed. I think we're going to see the lads today go a lot further, particularly Tom, he's a good lad, a lot of good support from his, uh, his people as well. I'm going to go into the adult British Championship, uh, have a go there, see how we get on. 
it's going to take maybe two years, three years to get into it properly. And uh, a couple of Europeans next year and see how it goes. Hopefully it'll go all well. Having looked at the results, I think uh, Dan could do to go to bed a little bit earlier on the next trial. He dropped a few marks there that he shouldn't have dropped, but all in all, uh, okay, we've come eighth today, but overall in the championship, I don't think he's lost his fourth position, because as it works, we can, out of the competitions that we've done, lose one of the, the worst score, and probably today will be the worst one. So it hasn't really affected us too much. How do you feel like uh, didn't ride too good really. Could have done better, but next time we should do. Okay, so yeah, now this is it. We're home. Long trip back home. All right, thank you very much. See you again. We hope you've enjoyed a look into the world of trials and don't forget to check out our fact sheet on the web through our website at meninmotors.co.uk where you'll find tips, links and advice. Join us next week when we look at the very different sport of scooter racing. Uh, hopefully the, mod the alterations to the carburetor will improve things, we hope. It's very hard to put a value on it because of all the time and effort that's gone into it. I mean, if you're going to just go out and buy everything to go on it, and all the engineering work that's gone into it, it's got to be easily £4,000.